Good morning, Terrans. So it's time for another Gnome x Gnome episode. And by the way, there is a new Discord server. You can contribute news for the next episode. Check below on description for links if you want to join. Okay, let's do this. And if you see anything wrong, which is totally impossible, please correct it on comments and I will fix it on next video. And now the wrongs of last time. On the last episode, I said that Lib Adwaita in the next version, after 1.5 release, will drop the support for various widgets that it now replaces with Adwaita dialogue. That's wrong. There will be only a deprecation warning and the support will be removed in some more distant version, like in 2.0. Sorry, my bad. And since we're here, we can also check the commits of the last week, which just passed the 4000s. Whoa! So, um... We have a few bug fixes, some styling improvements, but we also have the implementation of a window-backed mode for dialogues. This commit modifies Adwaita dialogue class to handle the windowed property and create a separate GTK window for the dialogue if needed. This allows for more flexibility and customization of the dialogue appearance and behavior, for example, when the parent window isn't resizable. The other thing is that this week we have the 1.5 beta release, so even if you can still keep using the old widgets for now, you should really consider switching to Adwaita Dialog, because it's way cooler, it will work better on smaller screens, and eventually you'll need to port anyway. You'll find a migration guide on Adwaita documentation pages. All right, Mutter. I want to start with the patches from Robert, which is... is... is the direct scanout for cropped and scaled surfaces that is merged for GNOME 46. Yay! I know those sounds feels awkward. Well, not to me, stupid humans. Then we have some code cleanups and docs improvements by Bilal. And even more code cleanups. There is a bug fix by Carlos with a missing input focus for pop-ups. Um, a code improvement by Carlos for reading the fourth parameter of extended display identification data and mapping it correctly to output. But what is perhaps most important for this week is that Dor updated the variable refresh rate patches for GNOME 46, and the merge request is ready for a review. It's coming, guys. So if you have a development version of GNOME, you can already try it and open issues. And by the way, Jonas has started reviewing it. So it might have some good chances to get into 46, but without any promises. And together with the patches on Mutter, there is also the merge request on settings for adding a UI support. Don't ask me. I don't have hardware to try it. But I know many are waiting for it, so be positive and help. Basically, there is nothing excited happening in Shell this week. In fact, there wasn't even a reason to make a chapter for it, but since I did, Jonas fixed this bug with the embedded screen recorder going dead after two seconds, producing a broken video file some code improvements from Florian, and some style sheets changes by Sam, but nothing dramatically really. Nothing dramatically on JavaScript either, but it is uh, worth to mention there is a new release that closed a few bugs. Truth is, you can't expect everything to be super active every week, with the exception of... So, files, and the most important happened last week, actually yesterday, even if some clips are from two days back, is that we have the 46 beta release, which means a feature freeze. But lately, GNOME is getting lots of freeze exceptions, so perhaps some things can come a bit later. I'll put a video with all files changes, but if you scroll already on what's new section, you'll see there is nothing really new. The full release is yet another refactoring and bug fixing release with performance improvements and some small UI updates. On the bright side, there is lots of activity on merge requests. So let's continue where we stopped last time, and most specifically, it was on the redesign sidebar. So, Antonio says, Given the remaining issues, unresolved design questions such as this one, and he means the network places I'll show you in a bit, I'm marking this as a draft. And because it was one week before the feature freeze, which we are in present time, the whole development goes for Files 47 in six months from now. The good news is that they will keep continue working on this feature and resolve the remaining issues, which brings us to some new designs. One of the issues Antonio was referring was the situation that someone has lots of drives, so these can consume a large area of the bar, and moreover, they can even be rarely used. 
So Allen Day Next will propose an editable sidebar that the user can select what's visible and what's not. And yes, this design is very similar to Finder, but will we be now start complaining about actual improvements? And because details do matter in design, Allen is already taking into consideration the case that the drives can be somewhat changing frequently, leading to an awkward experience. Anywho, there will be plenty of time to bother with that in the future. But for now, let's watch what's new and on main for this week, and I obviously mean the explicit search mode, which is kinda less fascinating than it may sound. Um, let's operate it, boss. Okay. Um... Currently, if we perform a search on a directory, and it won't return any search results, we'll get back a search everywhere input that will search on every index location. What's new is that we can now directly access this functionality, which is useful if we want to include search locations outside of our home directory. As part of this change, we also have some icons redesigns. So the local search icon is now replaced with a folder and a magnifying glass. Um, that isn't this week new, but there are recently introduced options to copy the path location or edit the URL input from the three dots menu. This week, we also had some small UI fixes on the new progress indicator that last time I was complaining it wasn't looking like it fits. Um, well, it still doesn't look awesome, but what can you do? Um, that's not new, but unfortunately there isn't any progress on Sushi, which is the file previewer of files, and it is super useful, but super sucky at the same time. On this bug report, there is an issue open for poor performance on previewing text files, mostly because Sushi is still on GTK3, and it still uses GTK Source View 4. Corey is the files maintainer, and also the guy who worked on Sushi port in GTK4, and he explains about the blockers, like events being still on GTK3. By the way, there is a working merge request for porting events on GTK4, but for now, all the issues with files previewer remain, and it is annoying as hell. It seems that we are finally getting some Outbox support from Microsoft 365, which is even more welcome considering there weren't many third-party solutions. The patches are on GVFS, and it uses the MS Graph API. But the API is actually implemented by a GNOME contributor, and it doesn't use the official MS libraries. I assume because there isn't a CLang SDK? Anyway, there is also support on GNOME online accounts. And obviously we can pick MS Cloud Services from Settings, this merge request is still open, but it mostly affects the accounts list UI, and it is going to merge, I believe. Finally, we have the MS Graph library, and I really hate when GNOME does the things that others should have done. I don't mean I dislike the Drive 1 or the G Drive support, but I do dislike the fact that isn't the MS or the Google developers working on that. It makes absolutely none sense. So, all those patches combined at a new MS provider, but I'm not able to connect, so I can't really tell what works and what doesn't but very hopefully we should be able to connect the OneDrive support and get a drive option in file sidebar, similar to G Drive, and again hopefully, and that's a big hopefully with a more reliable implementation. How lucky we are to have a new GTK release, and I mean it, because I don't have to dig through the commits and figure out what's happening. I can just read the change logs. Thank you, Matthias. It's 4.13.7, I guess that translates to something like 4.14 beta. And the most important changes is the improved handling of scales and glyph cache efficiency, and the implement cache eviction for glyph and texture caches, which I spend some extra time to read what it does. Basically is a new algorithm for evicting more efficiently dead pixels and glyphs from the GPU, freeing memory. Speaking of reading low-level commits, let's go to the next level, and I mean freaking glib. Okay, really, even if I had the time, because it takes lots of time for me to read these commits, I don't think there's even a point to read those, unless there is a release with official change logs I can read. For example, I see a commit be like, drop calls to gtype init function, which was written 11 years ago, and it was only committed four days back, so I thought, hey me, this should be fucking important, let's investigate. Are you fucking kidding me? One single line. In the meantime, I get some comments asking why I'm using Edge. But isn't obvious? How you think I'm reading the glib patches? There's nothing exciting on no meta the last few days, but I saw this commit that updates the Glycine loaders, which made me to remember, um, if you don't know, Glycine is a Rust library for decoding image files developed by Sophie, that she's also the maintainer of Loop, the official image viewer of GNOME. So Glycine keeps track of the supported image formats, and you know what's missing from the list? Animated PNGs. I know, right? 
I was devastated too when I discovered I couldn't see my animated emojis. I hope that to be resolved soon, and Gnome to replace their stupid still and flat images with awesome 3D animations. And so that was everything for now. There was some module skipping, but since Gnome is on beta and feature freeze, from the next time I will start doing full reviews so you won't miss a thing. Maybe. Say goodbye to your YouTube fans. Oh my. Me Beta here, your beloved Me B from the far off Mirror Universe. I'm bidding a tearful farewell to all my dearest Rust coding pals and Gnome Linux comrades. Don't worry, I won't be leaving you empty handed. Keep your eyes peeled for new programming tricks and galactic adventures on my channel, Me B Code. But alas, I must embark on a perilous journey to the mysterious planet Rabbit. Though saddened by my departure, remember that the power of friendship knows no bounds in the vast expanse of the universe. So long, dear fans. Oh my, my god, synergy continue to inspire.